Hi friends, I'm not here to make money, I'm just here to have fun and one of the things I love to do is help other people who are doing creative things. So you can actually skip this whole video and just head on over to Carebrand Creations on Etsy and buy her pre-made formula of uh, Weechel Bead Art Wax. It's called Tacky Wax. I've used it myself, it's very good. I personally choose to make my own mixture because I have discovered that for my own style and how I like to work with my art, I prefer something a little stickier. The tacky wax is a little more slippery, which might actually make it easier for beginners to um, use the medium without getting your uh, materials all gummy if you need to move them around. But I kind of want things to stick where I stick them and I don't want them to slide around if I'm working on surfaces that aren't perfectly flat. So I like a stickier medium and that is what I'm showing you how to make in this video. But again, feel free if you're a beginner to just go on over to her shop. Karen is wonderful. I actually buy all my beads from her as well and you'll be helping out an individual entrepreneur and she has quality products and the best prices on beads anywhere I've found. So there you go. And if you want to be a self-styled auteur <laughs> of the Weechel Arts <laughs> like me, keep watching. Hi, I'm Angeline. I have had a request to um, demonstrate how I make the, the sticky medium that I use to make this kind of art I make. I make um, Weechel bead art, and that is, I take tiny glass beads, oh, can you see this, and push them into beeswax and pine pitch to create these patterns. And um, this is a, a traditional style uh, made by the Weechel of Mexico. I do, this do not, call myself a Weechel artist. I just love making this art and it, it's just one of my passions. So this is a clock, of course. If you're interested in the art I make, it is at theancientsouthwest.com. You can link to my Etsy shop through that. But in any case, I have had a request to show how I make the sticky medium for this art that I make. Now the Weechel, they use something that's called Compeche wax. It's a, it's a special kind of wax. They don't, to my knowledge, mix it with any other kind of modifier to make it sticky. They use the sun to warm it and make it soften and they put it over their form and then they, they push the beads into that. I make a mixture of beeswax and pine pitch. I source pine pitch from natural sources if possible because I prefer it. It smells so good and typically, you know, the sources that I get it from remind me of good times, you know, so it's it's nice. I like working with that. It's aroma, sort of an aromatherapy thing while I'm making this art that I love to make. And um, I buy if if I don't if I don't have any that I've collected myself, I purchase it on the internet, um, raw pine resin. Although I don't go for the hard one, not the rocks. The, it has to be soft. So typically Etsy shops will have this kind of the soft um, pine sap, you know, pine resin. But it isn't resin um, as in like hard and crunchy, you know, it hasn't dried up. Um, and then for beeswax, the same thing, I, I source, um, I use a, a shop on Etsy and I buy some beeswax from them and I um, sometimes also, if I'm in a pinch or in a hurry, I'll go to Sprouts Market and they have these little wax beads that you can buy, um, beeswax beads, they're natural. Um, and they put it in their like aromatherapy department in the medicine department. They're little tiny beads and you can melt them pretty quickly and easily, but they're meant to, uh, I guess, be used in homemade candles or treatments or something. So um, those are the two items that I combine. Really, that's it. Sometimes I'll put a drop of oil in just to make the mixture a little slippery, but I've sort of stopped doing that because I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I need it. Um, yeah, so I just use, I just like the it nice sticky, and then when it dries, it dries hard, and the piece is um, will stay firm. Sometimes I will put some kind of lacquer over it if I feel like it's a piece that's going to be touched a lot, just to um, so it won't the the you know just to preserve it better. So anyway, without further ado and without further blah blah blah, I will get into how I prepare this mixture to make the Weedle Beater. 
So these are my materials. I have this hot plate. It's for melting um, candles or, you know, like scented um, bowls of, I don't know what you call it, incense or whatever, you know, wax, <laughs> wax things. It's a very slow melting um, hot plate. And I guess maybe any hot plate that you could use that would get something to a low enough temperature could be used. As you can see, I use it all the time to melt all kinds of stuff. So it's got a bunch of things melted on it. But I, I, I think a double boiler would probably be um, a correlate to this. So just anything that can kind of slowly melt what you have so that it doesn't burn it is the way to go. I have a stainless steel um, container, which I will use to melt this. This is a new one. So it has a little bit of a residue still in there. Um, the, it, this project will ruin stainless steel containers. And I have some others that I use sometimes that are all gunked up, but I decided to try to use this, this one. I'm gonna actually put a little bit of oil on it first, just a, a layer of oil, just to see if maybe that'll make it a little bit more slippery to get some of this pine sap off, because this pine sap is going to basically cook onto this. Um, that this is where a double boiler might come in handy. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to do is you can see I have pine, pinion pine sap and beeswax, a hunk of beeswax. This sap is raw. Okay, it's basically was peeled straight off a pinion pine tree, so it's got all of the impurities still in it. Um, you can buy purified pine sap. I. Um, it's a little cheaper to buy it this way, but it is a hassle to clean it out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, this, this pine sap in here. I'm going to heat it and melt it on my hot plate. And I'm just going to leave it there for a couple of hours and just let it warm up. I'll use a little wooden dowel or something to kind of stir it up from time to time. And, um, once that happens, I'll, I'll show you the next step for how to get some of those impurities out. This has been melting for a while and it's it's getting pretty well liquefied. I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer, but um, you can kind of see that what happens is the the goo, the, the, the junk, the, the impurities that we wanna take out kind of floats to the top, leaving this um, really nice clean pine resin down here at the bottom. So. Um, I'm going to stir it up a little now just to because there's big chunks in here that still aren't melted. I want to get them down where the heat is and then um, we'll check back in and see if we can get some of this dirt out. All right, it's been a few hours and this is pretty well melted down now. Look, I got the kind of mess I've got going for this project I'm working on. This is like a pencil cup or something. I guess you could use it to hold candles too. Whatever, it's a container I'm making. Got my little beads over here. But anyway, okay, so the reason I'm making this batch is because I'm actually running out of my sticky medium. This is kind of mashed up in a piece of wax paper right now, but this is the only little bit I got left. So I gotta make more. And now we're looking at this pine sap that's been kind of baking, not baking, been melting for a little while. And what I'm going to do is kind of lift out the, the more gross parts. I've tried so many different methods here. I've tried straining it through cheesecloth. Basically, that's a, just a good recipe to burn your hands. And it cools kind of fast, so you, I think I lose a lot of the resin, rosin, as you might say, with a fr French accent. Anyway, um... I, thought, I think I'll lose a lot in the cloth, so I've, I've decided to do this method. But you can kind of see that the, the sap is, it's so, it, the good parts are, are really thin, so it's sort of easy to lift out the impurities. I put it back on the heat, melted it some more. This is the sap. And I forgot that there was a step that I do that I can just pour off the clean stuff because at, at a certain point, most of the impurities will sink and gather at the bottom. So what I've done here is, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna do it quick before it cools off too much, but I greased up a piece of wax paper and set that sort of in a cup. I'm gonna pour off this 
sap right now. And by the way, if anybody knows of a, of a quick and easy way to purify um, this resin, uh, the sap that I am not using, just tell me, because that would be cool. Remember, you can just buy purified sap. You don't have to go through this process. So anyway, just because for expediency's sake, I'm going to go ahead and use this sort of, you can see there's still some debris in there, but I, it's okay. I'm going to still use it. Um, let's see if I can peel it off this wax. But, oh good, it's going to peel off. So let's get this back in a clean container. Nice. All right, I am going to get this in the container and I'll be right Okay, back. voila. Talk about getting your hands in the clay, right? And then I can see about how much I have, so I know about how much wax to put in. So I'm going to put those together. Mm, that might be a little bit much wax, but that's okay. I can always add more. I'm making my own recipe, so I have freedom to do so. I'm gonna put this back on the melter and let it get nice and soft and stir it together over time. And then I will show you the final step. So here we go, it's time for the fun part. This, I've been stirring this up, you know, as, as I go. I can feel like underneath there's some, um, like the impurities have sunk to the bottom. So I got, I have this waxed um, uh, muffin cup, paper muffin cup, um, it has sort of a, a waxy interior. And um, yeah, cup, or cupcake liner, whatever you want to call it. And now I'm just gonna pour this off into liner oh it's beautiful it's just the right color um why I'm saying that is because see and look at that all the impurities are just kind of stuck to the bottom so now we have a nice clean batch of wax uh, sticky medium to make the weech old bead art that's wax and pine pitch melted together and why I say it's just the right color is because see this is the color the wax started as just kind of a pale yellow and just from experience, um, you know, making this, you know, the, the pine sap is kind of, is a really deep amber color. And this is, I wanted to make sure that there's enough of the pine in the, in the mixture to darken up that wax, that, yeah, that wax. So that I can tell that there's a nice blend in there. This is going to be perfect. I'm pretty excited and how I test it sometimes is I'll, I'll take a little bit and I'll you know I'll take this like while it's still on the melter I'll take like a drop of it and and put it down onto wood or paper or something like that and kind of let it cool into a until it gets a little firmer and let's see if I can find mine yeah here's the old one so until it you know gets hard like this and I can tell by the consistency, I might try to push some beads into it. If it's too slippery, I know I need more pine pitch. If it's too sticky, if it's just, you know, this kind of slides off my hands. If it was so sticky, it wouldn't do that. If there's too much pine pitch. So that's how I know about it. It, it, it should feel tacky. For me, I like it that it should feel tacky. Like it definitely feels sticky. See, it sticks, but it's not, it's not a, you know, it's neither, it's not too much of one or the other. <laughs> yeah, that's why I try to do just about half and half. So that is the big grand finale of how we make the Rachel um, bead art wax. I hope this helps you do your craft. Here are a few pieces of art that I made recently that are in my Etsy shop right now at theancientsouthwest.com. Check it out. I got all kinds of things over there. Big, little, in between. <laughs> Maybe uh, I have something over there that you could use for an idea for your artwork.